Good evening. I'd like to welcome each and every one of you to our Wednesday night Bible study via Facebook and YouTube. And glad that you could join us tonight. And if you're first time visiting with us on these platforms, we'd like to welcome you. And uh, we'd like to hear from you if you feel like you've been blessed by hearing some of these videos. Uh, just contact us. You can send us a message on our Fellowship Facebook page or on YouTube. And also, if you want to contact me directly, you can email me at pastor at fellowshipbcvernon.org. And you can send me any prayer needs that you may have. If you have a decision that you've made and you'd like to share that with me, I'd love to hear from you from that. If these have been an encouragement to you, I'd love to hear from that. Or if you just want to say a word of encouragement, uh, I know we all need encouragement from time to time. If you'd like to send a word of encouragement to us, uh, we'd love to hear that as well. So we're glad to have you with us. I just want to get started on a few just normal announcements that we're, we're having. As you've heard on the news, they're still trying to have a process of opening our country back up. But as of right now, we're going to continue to have our online worship services and Bible studies. So that's not going to change. Uh, we're going to continue with that until we feel like uh, it is uh, a, an appropriate time. And I believe we will understand and we will be shown uh, when it is that appropriate time for us to meet. And we got uh, uh, just a lot of prayer needs. Uh, I won't say them publicly, but we all know that within our church and also outside of our church, there have been prayer needs that's been mentioned to me. Uh, pray for those. We'll mention those as unspoken requests. So just continue to pray for those uh, that have prayer needs, those that's lost loved ones, those that are sick. And also continue to pray for our country as we deal with this pandemic, that Lord will show us something through all of this. And uh, I've always thought and I prayed as we have been going through this. And my prayer is that I know it's a difficult time, but in the midst of difficult times, I believe God can show himself to us in a way we've never seen before. So my prayer is, is that God reveals something to each and every one of us that draws us closer to him during this time. So um, as far as our church people, uh, I try to maintain a contact with each one on a weekly basis. As uh, far as I know, everyone is doing all right. We wanna continue to pray for them and lift them up and uh, just send them a word of encouragement that I am thinking about you. I'm praying for you. And I pray that uh, we'll get to see each other again very soon. So that's just a, a prayer request that I have. But tonight we're gonna look at a passage of scripture that comes from the book of Psalm, Psalm 119. Now, when I said Psalm 119, you probably gulped a little bit because uh, that's a very, very long book. Psalm 119, but we're going to only look at a few passages of scripture from that. We're going to look at starting with verse 89, and we're going to go down to about 104. And I'm going to read uh, those passages of scripture, and then I'll make some comments. But I think the theme in this is that we understand that God's word never changes. He never changes. And I think that can be an encouragement to you. So let me open up with a word of prayer, and then we'll get started. Father, I do want to come to you in prayer, and Lord, just thank you for this opportunity to get into your word, and Lord, and share that to those that are that are watching uh, right now. Pray that you bless them, encourage them. Lord, be with each one. Lord, I do want to pray for all of our country. Lord, that you continue to be with our country, Lord, that Lord, you would just do a mighty work through all this. Be with all those that are sick, all those that are facing difficulty through this virus. Lord, I pray that you would just encourage them and heal them. And Lord, be with those that's lost jobs. Lord, I pray that you would be with those that's uh, lost their means of income. Lord, that there would be something that would come along that could, could lift them up and encourage them. And Lord, I know it's affected a lot of people. And Lord, I pray for our church. Continue to be with Fellowship Baptist Church. Lord, just minister to them. And Lord, I, be, I pray with those, for those that may have tuned in. Lord, that maybe is not a part of a church, that doesn't go to church, Lord, but they have heard your words that were spoken in these videos. And Lord, I pray that it's a ministry to them to let them know that we are praying for them as well, Lord, that we're lifting them up. And Lord, if there's any prayer needs they have, they can let us know about it, Lord. And I pray there's that one that may be listening and has heard about salvation. Lord, I pray that you would encourage that heart to continue to trust in you, Lord, and pray, 
Lord, if they have been saved, Lord, that they let us know. And Lord, if there's someone that's not saved, Lord, that they'd be saved before it's too late. And Lord, be with our Bible study tonight and pray that everything that's said and done is pleasing to you. Pray it in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we're gonna look at Psalm 119. We're gonna start with verse 89. And um, I'm just gonna read it. I'll make a few comments. And in the first verse, in verse 89, it says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Now that should, if I know you can't add to or subtract from the Bible, but that, at the end of that sentence, you almost want to say exclamation point, is that forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. And that's one of the things we know about God is that God never changes. He's always the same. And that one of the things that we can have encouragement in is that his word never changes changes. So what his word said 2,000 years ago is what his word says today. Nothing changes when it comes to God's word. And to encourage you with that, I want you to understand that even in the midst of difficulty, trial, tribulation, or even persecution, God's word never changes. And I believe for us as Christians, that should comfort you today. It goes on and says in verse 90, thy faithfulness is unto all generations. It doesn't cut off for those that trust in him. Every generation will receive the faithfulness of God. He is faithful. And the thing about it that's great about God, he's faithful even when we're not faithful. He's faithful to his word unto all generations. Thou hast established the earth and it abideth. Everything was created by the power of God and everything is sustained by the power of God. He created the earth just by speaking it. He created the heavens. He created the universe. Everything was established by his word. And then also, not only was it uh, established by his word, but it is kept and sustained by his word because it says his word abideth. His creation abideth. And it says in verse 91, they continue this day according to thine ordinances for all thy servants. It continues, it does not end. In verse 92, it says, unless thy law had been my delights, I should have been, then should have perished mine affliction. Uh, if you kind of put those words uh, in ordinary English today, when you're looking that, is that his law, God's law, is what's keeping us going. It's because of him, his word. We would have done perish by now if it wasn't for God. And it goes on and says in verse 33, I will never forget thy precepts for with them thou hast quickened me. God's word is what quickens us. Now, what do you mean by quicken? He, he makes our spirit alive. In fact, if you know how a person comes to know Jesus, they come to know Jesus because they hear the preaching of what? God's word. And when God's word is preached, the gospel is preached, people are quickened, people are convicted, people are made alive when they trust in Jesus Christ. So God's word quickens us. It makes us alive. It goes on, it says, I am thine, save me, for I have sought thy precepts. We belong to God. If you're a believer, you belong to God despite ourselves. Despite who we are, we're sinful people. Uh, myself, uh, top of the list, we are sinful people. But even, because, even though we were sinful people, we belong to God. We belong to him. It says in verse 95, the wicked have waited for me to destroy me. People will be after us. But I will consider thy testimonies or thy truths or thy declarations, the promises of God. I have seen an end of all perfection, but thy commandment is exceedingly broad. So we've seen an end to all perfection. Do you know the only thing that's perfect in this world is God? He is perfect. We can see the perfectness of God. We can see the holiness of God and it's in him. And not only is he perfect, but his perfectness is broad. He covers, he's perfect in every area and everything. And it goes on and it says in verse 97, Oh, how love I thy law. 
It is my meditation all the day. A couple things you can see there. God's word. God's word is what we should be in love with. We should be in love with the fact that God has given us a word. He has spoken to us through the word of God. And we love it, not, not that we're worshiping the words itself, but we're loving the fact that God has spoken to us and revealed himself to us in his word. It is my meditation all the day, and that's what it should be. We should be dwelling on God's word at all times. You know, and I, and I know why. Number one, we meditate on God's word all the day. It keeps us close to it, helps us know him better, but it also keeps us out of trouble. If we can meditate and trust in the word of God and keep a, a mindset of God's word all day long, we're going to stay out of trouble. And sometimes our minds can want to wander to things that are not of God. But if we meditate on the things of God all day, we will be closer to him. It goes on and says, Though that through thy commandments hast made me wiser than that my enemies, for they are ever with me. Your enemies will always be with you. They'll always be there, but God gives us wisdom through his word. His word, although it may look foolish to the world, his word is wisdom to us. It goes on in verse 99. I have more understanding than all my teachers for thy testimonies are my meditation. Now, one of the things I want to say there, he's not gloating. He's giving credit to God because what he's saying is people who are human, you know, and I am big on discipleship. I believe that we should disciple young Christians and that we should have one-on-one -on -one discipleship and that's great. But what he's saying in this passage of scripture is that there's only so far that discipleship can go without the leading of the Holy Spirit. And he's saying, I have more understanding than my teachers because I'm not depending solely on my teachers. I'm depending on God and his spirit to teach me. I am digging down deep into his word and allowing the Holy Spirit to guide me and, and to teach me. I believe that when we have disciple, people that disciple us, uh, it, it's great and it's a wonderful thing, but we have to understand that we, there's only so far you can go with discipleship without the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of God working in our lives. I can tell uh, someone to do something 10 times, but if they don't have that attitude of wanting to learn those nine other times, then it's not going to be very good. They have to submit themselves as we're learning from people that's teaching us. We have to submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit. It says, I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. We can look back in the things in the past and we, we can say, we're looking back hindsight now and we see what all has happened in God's word. Some people didn't see that. But now we have a full picture of what God has done and we, we see all the things of God and the great things of God. It says in verse uh, 101, I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. Keep ourselves from evil. Continue to seek God. Watch where we step. Watch where we go. Watch what we do that we can keep the word of God. Verse 102, I have not departed from thy judgments for thou hast taught me. I want to continue to serve him. I want to continue to follow him. I want to continue to look and do what he's called me to do. Verse 103, how sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. That's basically saying that God and his word is better than any pleasure that we could have on this earth. God's word is better than anything that we could have uh, that we might think pleasurable for a time. God's word is better than that. Number one, because it's more powerful. You can find actually more pleasure in serving God and his, in serving him and what his word says. And we also have to realize that God's word never ends. Honey ends. Things of this world ends. But God's word, his words never end. And it's a sweetness to our souls. In verse 104, it says, Though thy precepts I get understanding, 
or through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. I think sin should be detestable to us. We should look at it and, and have a be against it because it's so wicked. And because we're following God and serving God and we have this understanding that sin's a bad thing and it looks terrible to us. And it goes on in verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I have sworn and I will perform it that I will keep thy righteous judgment. Now I'm going to kind of slow down and stop right about here today. But thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That's a very familiar passage. But what is the, the thing about it? The word is a lamp unto my feet. It helps me to know where to walk. That we can walk straight. We can walk circumspectly. That we can walk in that straight line if we have the light of God's word ahead of us that we won't stumble, that we won't run into something that's dangerous. It's a light into my, uh, a light uh, is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. I don't know about you, but I'm bad to trip. I am bad to fall. And sometimes I have to really watch where I step. If I've got the light shining ahead of me, I know where I need to go. But if I have a light down towards my feet, I know how to step. So I want us to see that God's word is a lamp unto my feet and that I know how to step, but it's also a light to my path so I know where to go. And God's word does that for you and for me as believers. I have sworn, I have sworn and will, I will perform it that I will keep thy righteous judgment. We commit ourselves to God, we follow God and we seek to do his righteous judgment. And I want to go down to verse 112 and then I'll be done for tonight. It says, I have inclined mine heart to perform thy statutes always, even unto the end. We need to not just commit, but to follow through to do the things of God. And that's what he's saying here. I have inclined my heart to perform thy statutes always, even unto the end. So we are trusting in God's word. We're following God's word because his word never changes. He never changes. His God, God's word is sweet to us. It's, and it's wonderful to us. It's a lamp and a light to us. So therefore, all those things we need to commit and also follow through to do the things God has called us to do. And I think more than ever, we should do that is that we need to understand the power of God, the power of his word, the greatness of his word, how his word directs us, but then we need to commit to doing God's word. And that's what I wanted to end on the note with tonight is follow God in everything. He hasn't changed since all of this has begun about a month or two ago. He hasn't changed. His word never changes. And his promises never change to you. But we need to always be willing to incline our heart to follow him each and every day. I want to close with a word of prayer, and I appreciate each one of you for checking in with us tonight. Father, I just want to come to you in prayer and thank you for this opportunity to get into your word. Pray that you bless every hearer tonight. Pray that you just give us a great rest of this week. And Lord, I pray that you encourage the people that are out Lord, and maybe they're at home, they can't get out. But Lord, I pray that you encourage them wherever they are. And Lord, continue to be with our church. Just lift up our church. And Lord, pray for all those that are affected by this disease. And Lord, just be with us as we go now. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanking each and every one of you. And I pray that you have a great week. And may God bless you.